So you like peaches? That's good. That's real good. Because there's one behind me here in this very polytunnel. Now, if you've been following my channel for a while, you'll be well acquainted with this tree, but people are asking me questions about it, and I thought what I would do is dedicate a video solely, or solely, <laughs> to this tree. Now, Variety Dixie Red, which is a US variety, and I believe it's from Georgia, and it's a red peach with yellow flesh, and I like the flavor. It's not massively sweet, but you can taste the, the peachiness, so to speak, of it, which I actually like. I don't like, you know, fruit just to be a total overly sweet thing. I really like to be able to taste the, the fruit itself. And the tree has done very well here. And we are experiencing some amazing weather here in the UK. I can't remember a period of time where which in the summer we've had such sort of an enduring summer of enduring temperatures. I mean, last year was good, but this year is particularly good. We could do with a bit more rain because we haven't had any for weeks now, but so uh, you can't have everything. And the tree, the tree behind here is absolutely lapping it up. But even last year was a very good summer, but the year before wasn't such an amazing one. And this tree produced very heavily then. So it certainly likes it. So what we're going to do is to get the camera here and pan it over the peach trees. So if you've tried to grow peaches in the UK or similar climate, you probably ended up with peach leaf curl. Now I'm not gonna go massively into that because I spoke a lot about it, but peach leaf curl is a terrible disease. It affects peaches, nectarines, and to my understanding, almonds as well. And more often than not, it will lead to death of the tree. And what I'll do is I will link a video down below I think I titled it Horrible Peach Leaf Curl, and it showed a tree that I lost to, I lost to Peach Leaf Curl. And so Peach Leaf Curl, when in the winter months, when the tree gets wet and the temperature falls below 16 degrees C, this is when the Peach Leaf Curl starts. So you can see the way that I'm stopping it from getting wet is by keeping it in this polytunnel. Other options would be to grow one in a pot, and then during the winter months, move it somewhere where it can't get wet or if you've got one up against a south facing wall something like that you can cover it up with a bit of plastic polythene whatever you get the idea but for me the polytunnel is how how i like it and we'll just go into the leaves here and you can see no evidence at all of peach leaf curl now a lot of you out there will be suffering, and you personally won't, but your trees probably will be suffering from peach leaf curl and it will look very nasty and you want to try to avoid it. So let's have a look-see at oh dear, these peaches. Now, you can see a great big, sorry, I'm trying to get for the undergrowth here. There you go, a great big cluster of peaches here. Now this tree is in fact indeed covered in peaches. Now, not as many as last year, but certainly a good amount. And they're actually bigger than last year because the tree didn't set so many fruit, which I quite like. I mean, look at that one, man. I mean, that is, look at that, look. That is a beautiful, beautiful peach, isn't it? I mean, look, look at it, it's lovely. And look at the color, you know, it just looks gorgeous, doesn't it? So this tree came from, here you go, look. I'll let you have, let's have a bit of a read from it. So. <laughs> peach Dixie Red, two yip, oh dear, in a 10 litre pot. Dessert peach, very winter hardy, late flowering but early to fruit. Hang on, there you go, you can pause the uh, camera, the, pause it on there. Dessert peach, very winter hardy, late flowering but early to fruit, smooth, very juicy flesh, resistant to bacterial canker, self fertile, protect from winter rainfall to control peach leaf curl. Tree height, when mature, three to four meters, Blackmore Nursery. So of course there's no way this is going to uh, get to three to four meters in this polytunnel because I can't let it. And you can see the massive amount of growth that it's put out this year. I mean, look, these green growing branches, you know, you can just see how many there are. I'm gonna to have to prune this, and stone fruits, you 
you generally prune when after the fruit has set so what I'll probably do is leave this until next year or I might just do some gentle pruning on it because I don't want these to in the winter time when they go hard I don't want the branches there because I don't want to pierce holes in the top of my polytunnel because of course they'll then cause leaks and blah de blah we don't really want that so there's a bit of a story behind this tree originally when I was thinking about what to buy. I wanted to buy an English heritage one, so an older fashioned English variety, UK variety of, of peach. But um, I went on to Blackmore Nursery, who I respect very much for the quality of their trees. And what I did was I, I had a look, and it was out of the time for the bare root trees, because dormancy was finished, and it was in sort of spring, summer time, I believe. And um, they only had this variety, Dixie Red, which I'd never heard of before. You know, Rochester, Peregrine, you know, the older, older varieties. But they didn't have, you know, I've never heard of this before. So what I did was I ordered one. It arrived in a pot very promptly, nicely presented. And as I stated before, probably, I'm going to link some videos down below. You can have a look through there. And I grew this first in a pot. And it had a few little peaches on it, which had fell off into the box when it arrived. You'll see them on the video. And then I put it in this pot with the growing medium. And the following year, blimey, I was surprised at just how much, how many peaches came off of it. And ever since then, it's just been an amazing tree, which I've been very fond with. And a few years ago, or well, last year, early, early-ish last year, I moved it and put it in the ground here in the polytunnel. So we'll take the camera and I'll show you what it looks like in the ground. And I'm going to be... Uh, organizing this polytunnel a lot uh, a lot better than this but uh, you just bear with me for the time being yeah i mean you can see look just here that was the the root ball i put it in there look. and look at these roots it's putting out it's put out i mean you really can and um i believe please don't uh, quote me on this i believe it was grafted onto gisella 5 which is like a medium vigor i've got to cut this off these here because these are growing from the rootstock but um, yeah you know certainly a good oh, another peach there what I want to try and do is find one that's ready there you go it's got a little one on it there look I want to try and find one that's ready-ish and pick it so that you can actually see now, they're not all quite there yet but uh, there you go let's have that one there you go not the best example because it's got a bit of a you know, what do you call it? Rot there, but never mind. We'll pick another one. Now look at that. What a great peach. Mm. So that's what it looks like. I won't um, chew too much because I don't think people appreciate the, um, what would one call it, the food consumption chewing sounds on the, on the camera. But yeah, so look at that. That's what you get. And it's a freestone variety, meaning the stone easily comes away from the flesh of the peach. Here we go, let's have another one. So I really want to you know now there you go, that is a that is an example of an excellent homegrown peach. I mean look at the colour of that. That truly is a beauty, isn't it? Look at that. You could paint a picture of that, couldn't you? Just, uh, what should we do? For the thumbnail so yeah with regards to peaches there are other ways that uh, you know I did try to defy peach leaf curl and set one outside if you look at the video down below you'll see but it got peach leaf curl and that was variety Avalon pride which was allegedly meant to be the um, the most resistant variety to peach leaf curl 
Well, I grew mine outside as a, that tree as a freestanding tree, and I can tell you what, and you'll see by the video, it really it was anything. Certainly, the resistance was not uh, the resistance was futile in the case of uh, that that particular tree. So, I had to uh, dig that up and discard of it. But um, I personally, you know, unless you're going to get into the world of applying fungicides. I mean, they say you can apply Bordeaux mixture and copper sulfate, blah, blah, blah. You get the idea at certain times of the year to avoid it, but I personally wouldn't bother just sticking a peach tree outside. Certainly as a hobbyist, I'd find a way of, you know, making sure it doesn't get wet during the winter months. And I think for me, really, the lowest maintenance is simply get one and stick it in a polytunnel. You know, if you've got the room, well, you could even have it in a pot in a poly tunnel. You know, you just don't want you don't want to risk throwing your investment down the drain for your tree. So apparently, in Victorian England, they um, they used to grow a lot of peaches here in the UK, and not that many people do grow them now. In Victorian England, a lot of people grew them in greenhouses, obviously not in poly tunnels, because I don't think plastic was around. But um, you know, grew them in greenhouses and things like things of that nature, or injuries, whatever. So you know, maybe we could start to start growing peaches again in the UK. You know, commonly, just like we do apples and pears, plums, cherries. You get the idea. Because you can you can grow peaches here. I mean, I don't know how viable it would be to grow them commercially, but. It would be intriguing, wouldn't it, if someone had a few acres of land and they grew British-grown, UK-grown um, peaches here. It would be intriguing because they grow cherries commercially in polytunnels because of uh, you know, keep the birds off and to control what do you call it, fungus and that sort of thing. It would be certainly an interesting thing to uh, to look into, wouldn't it? So basically. That is a video on on the Dixie Red variety of peach, and if you've got any questions on it, please feel free to ask me down below because I'm quite uh, I'm quite passionate about uh, the growing of peaches in the UK and nectarines as well because people think it can't be done, and yes, it's not as straightforward as say plums or apples, and a certain degree of research and you know a bit more effort maybe has to be employed but it certainly is possible and you know unless of course you're a peach you know peaches and nectarines are your 100% your favorite fruit if you're just going to grow one tree it might not be wise to just have peaches you know you might want to get your bases covered with a few of the more commonly grown fruits first but you know if you fancy having a go at something a little bit exotic you can grow peaches and nectarines here in the UK as long as you stop them getting wet in the winter months, yes? And my advice to you out there, if you're gonna have a go at doing it, grow them in a polytunnel. Take it or leave it. If you like my work, please feel free to like, share and subscribe. And I'll see you, well, I'll see you soon, I guess. For the thumbnail. Yeah, so um, just a matter of interest, I uh, plugged in Prunus persica, which is the Latin name for, for peach, onto the internet. And intriguingly stuff, it states, here we go. The flesh is aromatic, very good, mildly sweet, and incredibly juicy, which, you know, I said it was, I think, which means... Okay, so yeah, I just plugged it into the internet, Prunus persica, the Latin <clears throat> for peach, Dixie Red, the variety, and the flesh is aromatic, very good, mildly sweet, which I stated, and incredibly juicy which means it is not free stone. So I said it was free stone, but apparently it's not. No big deal there. But one thing about peaches is many people think that uh, they're almost a tropical fruit, but they do require a period of dormancy. 
and that is when the, the leaves fall off, the tree goes into rest, and then it will, all being well, fruit the following year. And what you get, you get some beautiful pink flowers on these peach trees and nectarines. They really do look gorgeous, gorgeous indeed. So they require a period of dormancy. So, you know, the UK, it's a great climate because the temperature does does get cold enough to induce dormancy and peach peach trees are generally hardy to around minus 20 degrees C there or thereabouts so generally in the UK we don't get winters you know much I certainly in my uh, I think in my 33 years I don't think I've had a winter you know colder than colder than that or near that so there you go so great tree that was a little sort of postscript note there. Off I go now. See you soon.